So there is a new framework in town yet again, yet another week, we have another thing, but I think this one is different. And the reason for that is because the way it places itself, it says that it's a framework which is built for local first real time applications like linear, if you have seen. So this framework is called as one and it's built on react, obviously, because react is one of the most popular choices out there. So you see it's, it's on one stack or dev and it says that one is a new react framework for web and native okay built on wheat it simplifies things with universal type routing across static server and client pages plus an amazing new solution to data this i think the amazing new solution to data is an interesting part but whenever something that tries to solve for a lot of things as a framework i get a little skeptical because usually the trade-offs are hidden under the rug and they are mostly either about the performance or the customizability but i'm excited to try out this one thing because the people who have made it they are the same people i think who also created replicash and these sort of real-time technologies right so tamagui.dev is also one of the things i've heard about it i'm not exactly sure what this was okay so it's a styling system yeah okay this these are not replicash guys then i think i'm not sure i've seen somewhere like mentioning of replicash here and there also zero for example yeah okay zero is made by creators of replicash yeah so one is a framework which is partnered up with zero uh, which is another thing another utility which specializes in real-time applications right okay awesome so first things first let's try to get some hands-on with this so i'm gonna copy this command let me just go ahead and spin up a playground on code dam i'm gonna just create a normal playground just an html css playground and i'm just gonna create all of this on my own but it also supports like npx1 so i'm assuming that it also supports bunx right instead of npm so let me just go ahead and clear off everything from here let's just say bun x1 i think it should run yeah looks like it is running it is installing all right so hello world code dam for example let's say we just want to keep minimal for now let's use bun why not all right so we can see that it did set up something inside this hello world code dam and if I run bun dev now it patches some dependencies and it does something okay so it's running by default it's running on port 8081 so let me just go ahead and try to change the port here to 1337 so that we can get a preview on the right in the right window okay so that clearly didn't work so let's see if we have some documentation on how do we change ports okay so they have port as an option itself so let's just try port 1337 and once we have that give it a refresh so that it actually picks up the real application and there we go this is the first i think that's the landing page and that's it so not a not a very exciting landing page but okay let's take a look at what this thing actually do so i'm just gonna quickly get a quick demo of the framework itself because it's new for me so just watching this a little you know in a skip mode so what he does is bun dev which is something which i also did did not get as exciting of a landing page like this one but you can see that a few things first right out of the box the first thing is that it's a it's a wheat project so it's not like using nextjs or anything like that that automatically means that they are not trying to <laughs> like you know i would say lock in but they are not trying to restrict you to a specific host like versal because it's a wheat application you can probably just deploy it anywhere then there is the zero true as a configuration option right so if we just go and take a look inside the documentation inside data because the zero is what the data layer is so they say that as of today zero is not yet in public beta so one does not include it by default we expect zero to be released soon so yeah i think they are not including it right now but what the zero thing basically is is that it's a general purpose sync engine for the web you put zero in front of your existing database and we distribute your backend all the way to the main thread of the ui so for example in our case we use postgres so with postgres they are doing some sort of replication with the zero cache then there is a web socket that connects the client with the cache and then there is your web 
app that's writing SQL that interacts with the client that delivers the information over WebSocket and um, this is how it works. So I mean to start off with there are a few things which I can right off the bat think are unscalable to I mean in within this architecture from a from my native developers point of view native as in like somebody who's just thinking about these things all day. The first thing is this WebSocket layer right so the moment you want to scale this up either this has to convert into an HTTP right so this interaction should not happen on WebSockets. WebSockets are fundamentally unscalable because they just take up the full TCP connection and then if you, I mean you can scale them but not as scalable as HTTP request right network request. So this is a bottleneck where I am betting that zero if they provide like some some sort of SaaS service or something they'll be solving for this right so they will be giving you the ability to create your own things and then they'll just handle this WebSocket connection on your on your behalf. This is fine this SQL replication I can get behind SQL you are okay you are maintaining some level of thing this is a this is a little bit of problematic thing and in general what my biggest concern with these sort of things are is that where is the authentication going on like for example you don't want the full database by definition to just sync all the way to your main thread like and we distribute your backend all the way to the main thread of the UI this to be honest is a scary statement for me it sure it brings in some level of excitement but it brings more questions than it answers for example what if I want to restrict certain certain features to certain users depending on the fields in the database itself right so if I have a user model let's say a user table which has a flag which says that this user can and cannot read other users properties then by definition you need the backend to tell you know if the user has is willing to read or not and the reason you can't do it on front end is because your backend is the trust layer right you can do anything on the backend you can do any sort of weird logic checks and so on but if those things happen on front end you can obviously bypass that logic so my biggest concern with systems like these is that how are these general purpose like because they would not fit in a use case which is specific to this specific query so I'm excited to see how this, these problems are solved because this is definitely interesting I mean who doesn't want an app like linear which just automatically just click 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 it starts working right nothing happening as such in terms of you know you figuring out whether that backend call has done or not because to be honest like if you look at all the systems that is how most of the things run right so if I go back for example and if I let me just go back to the playgrounds and if I let's say click on this and if I click on this button create playground it gets disabled because an HTTP call is getting made to the server then you perform a redirect what these sort of frameworks try to do is they try to avoid all of that so maybe what will happen in that case is when I click on that button it just suddenly goes to the next screen or whatever is applicable maybe not for this code damn screen but in general wherever it is applicable and it will just take you there right so this is what zero as a thing is solving even though like zero is not the topic of the video but because one uses zero which is by the way like <laughs> very interesting uh, naming philosophy I'm assuming that there would be a two and a three and four and I don't know like how would they maintain versions with this because there would be a version two of one and there would be a version one of zero so yeah I don't know if this is a good idea at all <laughs> but anyway let's let's take a look at what they what else they are saying whether it was the move from assembly to C or C to Java Ruby JavaScript JS jQuery whatever tools that make developers more effective with higher level code without sacrificing UX when we think that local first is clearly the progression for client side data. There's many that do this, or I have tried React Query, Firebase, Meteor, Rethink DB, PouchDB, whatever. Why choose zero? So, React Query is not, I won't say like it's built on how zero or how you know these things are working. Firebase, maybe, yeah, sort of like that. I have not tried others to be very honest, but. Okay, what does zero does? It's small client bundle size, okay. Smart thing that only fetches when you query first. Composition with sub queries like joins. Optimistic mutations for free. Real time granular sync. Works on Postgres, easy to deploy. When is it out? It's not out yet. So, so yeah, maybe in a couple of months. All right, so all in all, I'm not going to do a deep dive into the tech side. I mean, I can see like there are some primitives. Again, there are some component-like things. Then there are components themselves. You can do, there are hooks and all. Of course, like once you create a, start to create a framework, you have to bring all sorts of tooling and you know, everything that comes with it. So that's, that's again, like a hassle to learn if you already know a framework. 
framework but yeah i think this integration with zero is probably interesting because you know if you are trying to probably create an app like linear for example maybe you would not start with a basic react app project or a basic nextjs app maybe you will start with the actual framework which is meant for it in this case one for example so anyway we'll keep this video until here itself i think we'll probably do a technical deep dive or some level of tutorial maybe in some other video if that is something which i come across as an idea someday but that's all for this one let me know what you think about this framework and i'm going to see you in the next video really soon